Her real name was Willie. Um, and over the years, I don't know exactly the story behind it, but Willie turned into Billy. And so she was always referred to by even family and, and close friends, uh, all pretty much all of her life as Billy. Well, she was really active in a lot of our lives in a lot of ways because she was not only the stay-at-home mom, but she was our school bus driver. She was also involved in a uh, local newspaper, just a myriad of different things. We probably would have been considered a poor family, but we never really knew that, I guess, until we became older and realized what we didn't have. and. Uh, one of the ways that she always showed her love was was her cooking. It was the best there was, and she uh, she actually worked in a Catholic school at one time, working in the kitchen there. Later on in our lives, she and Dad decided to invest in a family restaurant, and it was called the Country Squire. So <laughs> we would get up in the mornings, uh, going to fix breakfast, um, and. Her cooking was famous and uh, for the local area, so we did uh, breakfast and lunch there. So family was uh, ingrained in her from the beginning because she came from a small community that was very family oriented. So um, love of family was really strong. But cooking was uh, cooking was a time for everybody to gather around, and I remember no matter where we were, Nana was always cooking, and that's how she, I guess, in some ways showed her love to others is through her food, and it was good. <laughs> when I took your mom up to meet Nod and Papa for the first time, as we pull up in the driveway, before we even got out of the car, I said, oh, not, mama's cooking biscuits. <laughs> and your mom said, how in the world do you know that? And I said, can't you smell them? And you literally could smell that smell of her biscuits out in the driveway. Even though we don't have her here anymore, mm -hmm. we obviously still have her recipes and it's not something right. that we do a lot, but mm -hmm. as we saw today, when right. we do, it's pretty special. What is yeah. what is that like for you to still have a little piece of Nana? Yeah, that's what it is. It's still just a little piece of her. Um, everybody's got that one little thing that they leave when they leave this world, but they leave behind for their family. And for us, I would say that's it. That's that little piece of her, is her recipes. The biscuits were just always, always, always something that no matter what was being fixed, there was always biscuits. Biscuits were the top priority. <laughs> so, yeah, that, that little piece of her is what I think we'll always cherish and remember and enjoy even still because the recipes bring the food that people enjoy, but always bring the memories that were good times of family gathering, family being around. Um, growing up, I don't know, I just, I always remember Nana just pouring her heart and soul into her kids and her grandkids um, through her cooking. It's it's how she showed her love, it's how she showed that she cared. Um, she would put countless hours every day into just providing for you with her food. When I was overseas and I just remember getting that call from my parents uh, when she had passed. Um, and it, it wasn't just me losing uh, the, the good biscuits and the cakes because those are those are things that will always have from her. Um, it was losing the love and the time that she would pour into making them for us. And I think that's why I chose to do this project is because there's a lot of things that I wish I could have told her. I should have said thank you more. I should have loved her more. I should have given her more kisses. Um, but one thing that I can do to make up for that is to continue using her recipes and to tell her story. So that's what this is. This is the story of my Nana.